Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea, if you're new here, if you're not new, welcome back. I appreciate you coming back, you are the realest. If you are new, welcome. Please do subscribe, I would appreciate that so much. Comment down below, introduce yourself. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all the places, all of those are linked down below, but across all social media, I am at I am CC Suarez. Also, if you would like to watch any of my other commentary, content, deep dives, true crime videos, anything like that, go ahead and click right up there in that corner. All those will be linked up there. It's very bingeable playlist from what I have heard. The makeup I'm wearing, the lipstick, of course, all that linked down below too, along with a bunch of my favorite creators, some sources, some facts for you as well, and basically just everything you need to know. So for today's video, let me just tell you, I don't think I've been, you know, this excited about a Zoom call, like getting access to one in so long, so long. So today we have a fabulous, just super, honestly, super toxic and brainwashy Monique Zoom call that we're going to listen to. But of course, we're going to debunk it. So we're going to, you know, go over facts and really react to it as well. And of course, have some fun along the way. I've been on YouTube for a while, right? And I used to lifestyle and beauty. And then July, mid July of last year, I switched over to commentary content. Love it so much. It has changed my life. And I am just eternally grateful for y'all so much so much. Having said that, in that time, I have witnessed some truly heinous <laughs> gaslighting, manipulative, just crazy content put out there by multi-level marketing reps. And y'all know, sure, yes, I'm funny. I roast them to an extent. I might poke fun at them here and there, but my main thing is I always want to be able to debunk them, show y'all the truth, back it up with facts and some sass and try to help you see through the manipulation and be able to really see all of these red flags that they put out there that are really shrouded in luxury lifestyle and this opportunity and I care about you, I want you to do good. And it's like, mm, you only care about your wallet, what are you doing? So I think that's really important to put that type of content out there and obviously being funny and all that about it is usually the best way to make this content more consumable for everyone, right? And that way it's not only easier to watch, but it's proven that that is a better way to put out content. And again, not only so that people can watch it, but it gets people to come and stay. And therefore you learn more. Okay. So that's how I really think about it. And I'm able to impact more people by doing that. Having said that in the last year, I have witnessed just the most heinous, content put out there by multi-level marketing reps, right? The gaslighting, the toxicity, the lies, the misinformation, the just manipulation, the craziness, right? Of all of those videos that y'all have seen me react to or that I haven't reacted to yet, of all of those videos, this tops all of them for me. Now, the upline that we'll be listening to today, her name is Vic Alario, I believe is how you say her name. She is a public figure. She was on MTV. She has so many Instagram followers, just a whole lot. She is a public figure. So I'm able to say her name. I'm able to show her face. This content was shared with me by at least 10 different people. So there you go. I'm able to post it. I just want to make that clear, do disclaimers, all that. The title of this uh, call that we're going to be reacting to is Level Up or Fall Behind. So it's already off to a great start. Now for the first like four minutes, what she does is she asks everyone like, okay, what are your goals? Like what are, you know, not only what rank do you want to be at by the end of this month, but what rank do you want to be at? And then she asks, okay, well, what rank do you want to be at by se the end of September or like Mo Nations, which is September-ish. And then she asks, what do you want your December bonus to be like what how much money do you want it to be and so she gets all of them hyped up whatever grab your wine get comfy it's a long one it is a dumpster fire <laughs> get ready are you self-disciplined enough to level up and make th those goals happen to make your end of month goal happen this month to make your August goal happen to make your Bone 50k bonus check in December. Are you disciplined enough to make that happen? Let's get into it. I'm gonna break this call up by two separate sections here. Right now, I'm talking to the new girls. And when I say new, I mean under MM. Anybody under MM whose business has hardly scratched the surface yet. Sorry if I say girls, I'm so used to this being a girl's business. This used to be the girls' club, but now we got the guys taken over too. Uh, which I'm actually here for. Love having the guys on. But um, so when I say girls, please don't mind me. But I'm talking to everybody under MM, okay? Everybody whose business has hardly scratched the surface yet. Please know this and remember this. 
when you join this business, you invested into a mentor and mentorship. Okay. Don't resent your mentors for doing exactly that. Mentoring you do not at this stage of your business, get discouraged by your mentors, crucial conversations, pushing you out of your comfort zone, telling you what works and what you should do. Because did you invest into a mentor or a babysitter? Okay. Did you invest into somebody to show you the way or wipe your ass? Which way? They aren't going to drag you to where you say you want to be. They're going to show you the actions that you need to take to do what you say you want to do to actually put actions out there. I'm like staring at the chat box, just like watching you guys go off. Okay. Your mentor is doing exactly that mentoring you. Now I want you guys to understand this. Think about a personal trainer and a client, a fitness trainer. Imagine this, you're out of shape. So you invest into a trainer, you're unhealthy. You hate the way that you feel that you hate the way you look, you get a trainer. Why did you invest into that trainer? Why did you invest into that trainer? Because they have the results that you want. They have the body that you want, the physique that you want, the health that you want. They have the mindset that you want. They have what you want. You trust in them. So you start with them. Now you start off super motivated, okay? Super excited. You're ready to rumble. You're showing up. You know, you're doing the whole thing. Now that trainer gives you the exact workouts to do. Every single thing they say, I look like this. You want to look like this. I am showing you step-by-step step what I do, what I eat, where, how I work out, when I work out, step-by-step-by-step. By step by step. They're going to show you the workouts. They're going to make you sweat. They're going to make you cry. They're going to put you in pain. They leave you sore for a couple of days. Now it's hard. And now you contemplate not going back. Now you've come up with all the excuses. I'm tired. I have my period, I don't feel well. I'm, I'm uncomfortable, I'm too sore. One of two things is gonna happen here at this point. After you're sore, you're beaten down, you cried, you're in pain, you're contemplating not going back, one of two things is going to happen. Number one, you're gonna li either listen to your complaints and your excuses and you're gonna stop going. And the result of that is that you're going to stay right where you are and you will continue to hate your body and you will continue to stay out of shape and you will continue to scroll through Instagram and look at every- But like, the thing is though, do you actually have the opportunity or is it a false opportunity? Also, this analogy I feel like is very, I don't want to say mean girly, but I mean demeaning to anybody, but demeaning to, I mean, women and young women, like especially, it just- Ugh, gross. And also, yeah, sure, if you don't go work out, you don't move your body, and you don't eat healthy, obviously, you're not gonna, if you do wanna change your body, you're not gonna be able to do that. But you can do everything your upline says, you can work as hard as you can, and then still there is an over 90% failure rate. I've heard from so many people, so thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have joined not only Monate, mostly Monate, but then other companies as well, and they listen to every single thing that they're, mentor said, and their uplines, uplines, upline, they worked it more than full time while they were still working another job too. And they didn't get past like the third rank. Gross. Like also um, the fact that she said, what was it? Don't resent your mentor for mentoring you, you know, for having those hard conversations for you know, doing this, that, and whatever. I feel like that just translates to don't get mad at your upline for being a dick to you. That's, that, that's all it, that's all it sounds like, basically. And of course that right there, cause she's the upline of everyone on this call, right? <laughs> that sentence in itself, is just foreshadowing to like the rest of this call. You're gonna level the f up. You're going to show up every day. Now you don't want to go. You don't want to go, right? But you're going to fight through the pain anyway, because you have a desired result and you're committed to that result. Bam. Couple months. A year down the line, you love your body. 
you're healthy, you got exactly what you came for, and you did that regardless of all the reasons why you didn't want to show up. You had a whole checklist, a pros and cons list, where you listed out 500 reasons why, why not, why you didn't want to go, but you showed up. So now you have the desired result. Now you have it. Here's the difference between those two people. Here's the difference between those two people. The first one who showed up when they were excited and motivated to get started, and then they quit when it got hard. And the one who just, who it was hard, but they just kept going anyway. Here's the difference between those two people. One operates on motivation. One operates on self-discipline. The one who operates on motivation means they also operate on discouragement. So they work when they're motivated and they stop when they're discouraged. They work when they're on a high and they stop when they're at a low. They work when they're doing well and they're ranking and they're recruiting and they're enrolling. And then they are on this high. I hit MMP. I hit AMB. Oh my God, I'm enrolling. I'm recruiting. And then 20 people tell them no. And then they stop. And then they get set back. This is too much. This is too hard. No one wants to do this. What happened? You were so motivated. Motivation is a temporary feeling, you guys. It's a fix. It's a cheerleader moment of like, Oh my God, I needed this. And guys, I know how many people of you are going to, people are going to get off this call talking about that they needed to hear this. Oh my Lord. The most like gaslighty, blame shifty BS I have ever heard, right? Like it's, this is weird, right? But this, this is really what they do. The whole, oh, I'm on a high, I'm doing so good, I'm doing so good. But then, I then I do bad. So if you're not able to be successful in an MLM or Monate specifically, since that's what we're watching, then that just means that you're not disciplined. You don't have self-discipline if you can't make it work. You can't see past the all the no's. And every no leads to a yes. Um, it's not a matter of you're not good enough, you're not working hard enough, you don't have the right mindset, you're not disciplined. It's a matter of oversaturation, the truth being told, the fact that you can only be successful if you recruit people, like that's it. But yet this is what they tell you. So that, so for instance, she just said, there's gonna be so many people who get off this call and are like, oh my God, I needed to hear that. So did she just admit that there's so many people on the call who aren't successful on her team, who are having a really hard time, who are really having trouble turning it into anything, who are getting a bunch of no's? That's that's what she just said. So yeah, I guess that's what she's insinuating. But yeah, she's saying that they're going to get off the call and be like, oh my God, I needed to hear that. Like, I, I just have to be more self-disciplined. And then that's it. They're trying to manipulate you so that you're second guessing what you actually know. Literally exactly what gaslighting is. And it is absolutely insane. So evaluate that. Are you feeling right now like, damn, I needed to hear this. Do you say that once a week after every good call that you hear that you needed to hear it? Every single week, something good happens. You're like, I needed that. But then after that, after they needed that, they put no pen to paper and they put little to no action and they make literally no changes in their business. <laughs> I love that. I love crickets. It's true. That's why. Because they put little to no action after hearing what they needed to hear. And then their business makes no changes. They needed to hear this, right? Oh, I needed to hear this. They're excited and they're motivated. And they get back to posting for a couple of dates until they get the next no. Until they get the next, is this a scam? This is a pyramid scheme? Oh, I saw all the bad reviews. Until they get that again. Now, the one who operates on self-discipline, which I know a lot of you do, the ones who operate on self-discipline means that they operate rain or f shine rain or fucking shine who operates on self-discipline who who shows up rain or shine who who shows up every day rain or fucking shine they work when they're motivated they work when they're discouraged they work when they're happy they work when they're sad no no it's not frozen i just i have no words so the thing is is that this works on two levels which you just said and it's all it's mm -hmm, all of it i could i yes all of these all of these all of them. I got like, I can't, I can't even, I got to do it. One, she's saying that if you feel any type of little 
not positive, I don't want to say negative, not positive emotion when you get turned down, when you can't, when you can't recruit someone, when you can't close someone, when you can't make a sale. So basically if you let rejection or failure, which this is how these businesses are set up, if you let that affect you and don't stay positive and keep going and just keep head down and grind and hustle and blah, 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 then you're not disciplined and you're not going to be successful and like you're a failure basically. And then the second way that works, what she just said, and this girl, she's good. She's good. I think she's one of the best manipulators. She's also one of the meanest people in this company. Now, like I said, the second way that works is that basically saying to ignore all of the, is this a scam? Is this a pyramid scheme? Basically ignoring all of the red flags is what she's saying. Like you can't let that stop. You got to keep going. Like if you even second guess or look into that or believe that for a second, you won't be successful. So she's good. I'll give her that. But also like, it's not good. It's just evil. It's just evil. They work when they're sad. They work when they're tired. They work when they don't want to work. They work when they're on a high. They work when they're on a low. They work when their boyfriend breaks up with them. They work when their girlfriend breaks up with them. They work when they got engaged. They work no matter what. Like how, how does someone have such a talent for like topping the next, like topping the last toxic thing that you said? Like say just, I mean, she's really leveling up with the toxic thing she's saying. Um, if you are having a hard time and you need to take a break from your side hustle, that's okay. Take a mental health day, take a mental health week. But she doesn't want you to do that because she wants to keep making money off of you. That's why. That's not a good mentor. That's not a good upline. That's not a good person at all. A mentor shouldn't make money off of you unless like you are paying for a mentorship, obviously. But for instance, I've been, I don't even want to say mentoring, but coaching and helping Julie Jo, my Jujo, love her to death. Her, ch I, you know what? I'll link her channel right up here and I'll put a link to it down below too. But she's great. She's awesome. We've been sending voice notes back and forth. I was helping her with like figuring out um, like editing and just giving her tips and stuff. And I even told her today, I was like, your first video was great. Like your personality really shined through. Like you it was, it was awesome. I'm so proud of you. And am I making any money off of her? No, I'm doing that for free. Now, could I pay, like, could I, now could I charge for consulting fees and stuff like that? Of course I could. Not going to yet, but could I in the future? Absolutely. Of course I could. But also I want to be very selective with who I'm helping. I don't want to help someone who I don't think has the potential to actually put all these things in action and do well, if that makes sense. So that's why I don't feel comfortable charging for that because then someone who is just absolutely not going to do good and not put anything into action is going to pay for a service and then that would just make me look bad, you know? Like, oh, well, I took a course and it's like, uh, you did? Are you sure? It wouldn't be a course. It would, I don't know. Literally be like one-on-one -on -one calls and stuff to help you with anything. But I wouldn't do that until I have like 100,000 subscribers or something. Anyways, um, this is horrible. And this is not a mentor. This is a bully. <laughs> like, this is, this is not, this is not good. This is not good at all. What happened to time freedom? What happened to working it in pockets of time? What happened to being able to spend more time with your family? Or, oh, I can work from bed. Nope, that's not an option. Because if so, then you're not disciplined and you're lazy and you're a failure. And that's the reason you're not being successful. Uh, right after a breakup? What? That is so toxic and damaging and abusive. Like, <laughs> this person, in my opinion, I believe that she is emotionally and mentally abusive to her downline. 1 million percent. And it sucks that she is literally like one of the top people in Moni. It's disgusting. Because they are committed to their goals and they are d committed to their desired result. It doesn't matter how much gets in the way and how much they have to get through in order to get there. They will do it. They will get through it no matter what, okay? That person who operates on self-discipline will always get to the top. If you guys are all the way at the bottom right now, remember, I'm talking to people under MM right now. If you guys, you know, are under MM or, or under, you know, just know it's not a matter of if you're going to get to the top. It's a matter of when, if you are self-disciplined. We were having a conversation in the group chat this morning and, you know, Jack was saying and everybody was saying like, because, you know, people start to compare themselves. Because there are people hitting AED in three months in our director's chat right now. And a couple of people, you know, like a couple of people, you know, it takes two years, maybe three years, whatever. But think about it. Who the f cares how long it took you to get there? If you keep going, you could say you got there.
because you were self-disciplined enough to get there. Level the f up. Match your mentor's energy or fall the f behind. It's as simple as that. Match your mentor's energy or whoever inspires you, match their energy or fall the f behind. Again, how? How does, how? How does this person have so many people still under her? It's so, ugh. And the, the thing that's, the thing that's crazy is that a lot of these little blurbs or little nuggets that these toxic uplines say, and I've said this multiple times in many videos, that a lot of these little blurbs are, like I said, nuggets. A lot of these things they say are like rooted in truth or makes sense in different contexts or makes sense in like the real world, but don't apply to being in an MLM. And that goes the same. That's the truth for this too. She said, don't compare yourself. You know, there's people who are going to be better than you, faster than you, whatever. And then, you know, basically it's not about the journey. It's about the destination, I guess. How long it takes you to get there, what you had to do to get there. You're there. That's fine. And I agree with that, but not in this context. No, not at all. And also she's saying that you got to the top and you'll only get there if you are disciplined. No, you'll get there if you're good at manipulating people or you're very pretty and good at sales or you have a following or you you know what to do to build a following. Like you're good at making connections. You're good at marketing, get in at the right time. Like it's just so gross, but because like these little snippets, these little lemony snickets, is that what that movie's called? Anyways, I rewatched that the other like two months ago and I was like, this movie's so good and so weird. I love Jim Carrey so much. Mm. It's truly a great one. Anyways, that's why people believe these little things when like you're already brainwashing you already are not to use the word desperate but yeah when you're so desperate to make it work and prove everyone wrong i haven't talked about that in a while but a lot of these girls just don't want to feel like a failure and don't want to you're prideful you're stubborn you don't want you know your family to be like oh i told you so you don't have to deal with that so you just keep going and going and going and going and you want to also prove her wrong too so toxic so crazy and not to you know skip ahead because i usually say this at the end of my videos but you are worth so much more than being treated like this you should never be talked to like this ever. Don't let anyone speak to you like this. Don't let anyone degrade you like this or belittle you like this. You are better than that. You deserve better. You are valuable. Your time is valuable. Do not work for free. Thank you. <laughs> Coming from someone who literally like worked for free for like four, eight, four or five years on YouTube. Still, that was a hobby though. Like I, ha I had my real job. <sighs> and that's different. It's completely different than an MLM. Outrank your f***ing mentor for all I care. A lot of us do it. A lot of us outrank our f***ing mentors. Who cares? This is your business, okay? Even if you outrank your upline and even if you make, you know, more money monthly than them, which is completely possible in a lot of MLMs, you know, depending on how many sales you have, depending on how many people you enroll, they're still going to make money off of you. You are still in their downline. They are still your upline. It's not like you can just, it's not a race, you know, it's not like you just pass them and you're ahead of them now. Like that's not what happens. It's very strange, but I mean, if, if they put ego aside and they realize that, oh, shit, I can make more money off this person if they rank above me. But realistically, if multiple people rank up below her, then she's going to rank up. So it, it, it just benefits them still. They want you to rank up so that they can rank up. It's self-serving. That's it. Yes, outrank me, please, please. I would love to see it. I would love it to happen. People always, always, always ask me like how I stay motivated all the time. They, all, I get DMs probably 20 times a day saying, I don't get it. How do you stay motivated? Like everyone's telling me, no, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a highly motivated individual. I don't wake up in the morning every single day motivated. It's a fucking Sunday today. I could be naked right now in my bed and chilling out with a bag of chips, enjoying my goddamn Sunday. It is the Lord's day. This is the day of rest for all I fucking care. I could have been doing that, but I'm like, nah, people got to hear from me. I got 
to say, I got to do, I got work to do. I'm not motivated to be sitting here talking to you guys. I want to be senior executive mother director. So I'm gonna get up here and I'm gonna talk and talk and talk until I lead my team to senior executive director. And I'm just gonna keep going until I have that desired result. You know, like this is what I, this is how I think about it. This is what I say. She said that she's not motivated. She could be, you know, naked and I don't know what naked has to do with it. I guess like being super comfortable, you know, doing nothing, just relaxing on a Sunday. But then she said, but no, I've got something to say. I, you know, whatever I need to make, you know, this, that, and this. And I, you know, I want to rank up because she wants to be SED, which I think she is by now. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I, she blocked me. She's one of the first people to block me. She's smart on her part, honestly, but also it doesn't matter. People. <laughs> People are still going to send me these types of clips. Like, it's so funny whenever people block me, it's like, you realize at this point, I don't, I don't like screen record anything. People send me this, like, but okay, block me. But she said that she's on this call. Keep in mind, it is the end of the month because she wants, she has that goal in mind, right? And she wants to do this. She's trying to motivate people, which she's not really motivating them. She's bullying them into doing what she wants so that she can rank up. But then she said, it's, it's you know, discipline. It's discipline. It's like, no. Do you, do you realize that being motivated is like you're, you basically have like the drive to hit this goal. Like I am motivated to get to this point. So that makes no sense. Clearly she is motivated to be on this call. Mo being motivated is basically just having an interest in doing something. That's, that's all it is. The, the, the drive to do something, the desire to do something, right? So it's just really funny that she's like, I'm not motivated. And it's like, girl, yes, you are. Like, does this really work on people? Do people really, like, people really believe this BS. It's crazy. You know, like, this is what I, this is how I think about it. This is what I say. Okay, a million dollars. This is a tangible number, right? A million dollars. Anybody can earn a million dollars in their lifestyle, in their lifetime, right? Any human being could have a million dollars. Now, my question is, for you guys to answer in the chat box, do you actually want to physically have a million dollars or do you want to just imagine what it would be like to have a million dollars? What, what is it? Do you want to have it or do you want to imagine it? Because I want to f***ing have it in my bank account. Like I literally want to see $1 million in my bank account and I'm not motivated for a million dollars. I am self-disciplined to get a million dollars, you know, like. The fact that this girl doesn't understand that the, the, mo the motivation is the feeling that makes you disciplined. Like, I, th I think she's getting like thoughts and actions like mixed up. Like, I, or I think she's getting motivation and discipline mixed up with like thoughts and actions or like dreams and actions. You know, we can, we can dream something. We can wish on something. We can, you know, think about something, but then actually putting in the work is different. So I think that's what she's trying to say, but this is just idiotic. This makes no, like... <laughs> And the fact that she said, and anyone can make a million dollars, no, not, that's not feasible for a lot of people. And also then she said, you can make a million dollars in your lifetime. In your lifetime, that, that probability is a, a bit more, but like, it just doesn't, it just <laughs> doesn't make sense. It just makes her seem so dumb. She's like, I'm not motivated. I'm, I'm disciplined. It's like, so you're, what? Ma'am. What are you trying to say? People who work on motivation aren't going to see that. They're not going to be in the million dollar club because they're going to stop. I'm never going to stop. I lost my rank when I first hit AED. I got fucking red carpet swept right out from under my feet when I hit director nine months into the company. And then I didn't hit it again for another almost full year. I hit AED again 11 months later. You think I was motivated for the 11 months of me working 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 to get to the same thing I did already no not at all I woke up every morning like holy shit, I gotta do this all over again now let me talk to the leaders here all right now I'm gonna switch it up because you know I'm not coming for the new girls if I'm not gonna come for you I'm gonna come for you way harder all right so mm and above also one thing that's weird is that she keeps referring to like she's separating the the people, like the audience, the people who are in this meeting between MM and below, which that's the middle of the compensation plan. That's the first market mentor. It's the seventh, right? The seventh rank where your first, first caddy qualified rank, right? I hate the fact that I just called it a caddy. And 
either one rank above that or two ranks above that. I'll, I'll put in the um, income disclosure statement right now. I'll also have that link below. Just so y'all know, whenever I get like that good, good, like those good documents, I put them on my blog. I put them on my website. I believe either MM or I think it's either the rank above MM or two ranks above it is where the minimum annual income is technically, technically considered a livable wage like for one person, one adult person. So it's interesting that she's splitting it between, she's saying like, oh, for like the bottom or like the girls who just started. It's like, why are you belittling those girls so much when that's most of your team? That's most of the company. That's almost all the company. There's girlfriend. There's less than 3% of the people at MM or above or above that, whatever. Like, she's very strange. Also, she said that she hit um, AED, associate executive director within uh, nine months of starting Monique. That's pretty impressive. However, she also had a huge following before that. So I think that's why she ranked up so quickly. Obviously, that really helps. But then, but then she said that she deranked, which I heard, I heard this happening to a lot of people around that same time. There's one girl that I know of in, she's in the Miami area, I believe. I think her name, yeah, her name's Liz, I remember now. I reacted to one of her videos and it was horrifying, the stuff that she was saying. It was so crazy. And she makes a whole lot of money, but she had mentioned that she lost like 3,000 people in her downline and she deranked and she like had to work her butt off to get back up. I'm sorry, but I have never, never been demoted in a nine to five. And I know that can happen occasionally. I mean, it happens It happens a lot more in multiple marketing companies than it ever would in a nine to five. And I know there's going to be people in the comment section that are like, actually, compared to an MLM, that comparison it doesn't even, no, doesn't even touch it. But it's insane. That she, like, I feel like that's why she's just so mean and so bitter. But actually, no, I just think that's her personality. She just sucks. Know this, okay? No f***ing this. It is easier to give birth than to revive the dead. Please know this. This is not a f***ing episode of The Walking Dead, all right? Uh-uh. You don't want f***ing zombies on your team, do you? You want people walking around like a zombie apocalypse is happening outside, which by the way, it kind of is at this point in time of our lives. Please know this. Please, please, please know this. Ready? If you are MM and above, please know this. No one owes you sh no one owes you your rank. Stop trying to level up people who don't want to be leveled up. You want to hit AED? Find people who want to hit MM. You want to hit SED? Find people who want to hit AED. Point blank. Do not drag someone that you recruited who's like, yeah, I'm going to just go like easy with this and, and be like shoving things down their throat to get them to the rank that you need them to be. Lead by example. No one should be scraping at month end, at the end of every single month, every little thing, nitpick, 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 to hit a rank and then complain that their girls aren't producing. You go produce more and then build whatever it is that you're missing for your rank. Oh, you know, I would be a uh, MMM, but Sammy didn't hit AMM. Oh, 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 so you mean you would be MMM, but you didn't give yourself enough options and solely relied on Sammy, who doesn't match your energy, you relied on her to finish your rank for you. That's, that's what you're telling me, right? I would be this, but she didn't do that. Mm, hold on. <clears throat> Let me take a sip. Let me sip my tea because the tea is piping hot right now. Um, okay, hold on. Let me clarify something. So Sammy's her own boss and she owed you what? Why did she owe you anything if she's her own boss? Don't sell the dream of being your own boss and then try to be someone boss. I'm like, oh my God, I am. This is affecting my glabella. God, I really need to go get Botox. It's the double speak for me. She said, don't sell the dream of being your own boss and then try to be someone's boss. Isn't that what you're doing right now? And then she says, it, 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 like, it just, it doesn't, I'm just having such a hard time like putting into words because I'm just like, 
I'm truly shocked. <laughs> I'm truly, truly spicy, but also shocked because she's saying one thing and then says like four other things that contradict it, but then goes back and it's like, but that's exactly what you're doing. And also that's how this company works. Like, yeah, you're your own boss, but e even if you are a 1099 employee, yes, you are, when it comes to taxes, self-employed, but typically, yes, you have someone to answer to. You have a manager, you have a boss. Like they really just, like they could never understand the fact that there is a clear difference between well, you know, legally speaking, yes, or technically speaking, like those types of phrases, for instance, technically speaking, actually, yes, I am. I am self-employed way more than them, but technically I am the, the president of a company. They're not understanding that something on paper doesn't mean that it's the same in reality for tax purposes. Yes, I am. The, sounds so dumb. I am the president of a company and Tony is an employee of that company. Te technically, I'm an employee of it too. I'm just the president of it. But like in reality, like, yeah, sure. Tony actually does. He does help me with a lot of things behind the scenes. And yes, I pay him. But also being self-employed and being your own boss are two completely different things. Also, her pillows look so cheap and uncomfortable. And that couch looks so uncomfortable. Just like everything in her apartment looks so cheap and uncomfortable. Like we get it. You like really went for the aesthetic, but... You, you filled a very expensive apartment. Well, very overly priced apartment. Just like really shitty looking furniture. Like, is that a futon? Are you in a studio apartment, ma'am? Nothing wrong with that, but don't be screaming at people on the internet if you're in a studio apartment with a white pleather futon. And the thing, sorry to keep rambling, but the thing is as well though, is that she's saying, well, basically like you put your all your eggs in one basket because if the only reason you don't rank up is because of this one person didn't rank up, then that's your fault for not recruiting more people is what she's saying or helping more people rank up. Like that's her own fault. And then also she's also doing the little manipulative thing and gaslighting thing and just blame shifting to where she's saying like, oh no, it's your fault. You didn't work hard enough. It's not your downline's fault. It's your fault. Well, no, that's, you can work as hard as you fucking can, just like she did within those nine months to get to whatever rank. And then she lost it. So was that her fault or was, were there some crazy circumstances that happened that weren't her fault? Because the difference between being a boss and being a leader is that a boss tells you what to do and a leader shows you what the f to do. Guys, I got girls making their bed every single morning because they watch me do it every day. Who makes their bed in the morning now because you see me post it on my, on my story? When you're in sales, when you're in that hustle mentality, which MLMs are, that's, and she's big on that too. I've literally heard her say multiple sayings and quotes and stuff that I used to live by when I was in sales for 10 years. And I still sometimes do, you know, head down and grinds. But if I have to, you know, edit and just listen. A lot of y'all know I batch film. I will film like six videos in one day. It is crazy. If Tony's working, you can bet your ass on that Saturday. I am getting a bunch of videos filmed. And that's my, you know, head down and grind mentality. It just, it's stuffing it for success. It gives me a bunch of shit to edit and I'm golden, right? And then also no pressure, no diamonds. That's another thing I say all the time to myself. And then you can't deposit excuses. Again, makes sense in real life, in real professional life, in real sales, not in an MLM. When you're recruiting humans, and selling a false opportunity. There are a lot of motivational speeches and things like that that really resonate with people who are in sales. Now, I have a whole playlist of videos that inspire me, you know, just like feel good stuff, right? They like live by this stuff. It's nice for like a reminder and like to kind of get you a little bit motivated, but not to like try to brainwash people. Again, it makes sense in normal life. Does it make sense in an MLM? Because it's just not achievable for over 90% of people. Okay. Anyways, one of the best commencement speeches I have ever heard in my life it was the University of Texas at Austin 2014 commencement speech by Admiral William H. McRaven. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made. That you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. 
So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. And I'm sorry for like going on like a tangent about that, but it's just it's just really funny. I feel like it's just another example of people in MLMs regurgitating things that other people created or said or came up with. I try to be like, well, I do this and people make their bed in the morning because of me. It's like, okay, girl, calm down, calm down. A lot of people make their bed in the morning to start their day off right. I have girls tagging me every single morning in their story because they see me, I, I reposted you, because they see me making my bed. I'm not anyone's mother telling them to clean their room and make their bed. No one wants to hear that. Growing up when my mom used to tell me to make my bed, I'm like, F off. I'll clean my room when I feel like it. But I show them. Who speaks to their mother like that? So she's just always been a rotten human? Listen, I know Kiki Chanel, said that she found the worst person in an MLM. No girl, this is the most rotten person in an MLM, in my opinion. Every day, how making my bed sets me up for a productive day. It sets me up for the right mindset. It set, sets me up to be organized. And then they want the same thing. So they do it too. They see me saying, making my bed every morning sets me up to have a good day. Making my bed every morning sets me up to be organized, puts me in the right mindset. They say, okay, I want to have a good day. I want to be organized. I want a good mindset. So I'm going to make my bed every day, you know? So I'm going to use, uh, you know, my girl Jenna as an example because I always got to embarrass her and shout her out. Um, but guys, if you want a badass team, you better be a badass fucking leader, okay? Also, one thing I forgot um, that she said is that a boss tells you what to do and then a leader shows you what to do. That's not, no, no. A, a boss is, a, that's a title. A leader is more of, it's more of like a, like a character trait, you know? It's more, <laughs> again, she just, she just doesn't get it. <laughs> So annoying. Also, she's like, you know, they, they say me, they see me do it. And because I'm a leader and they want to have what I have. And it's like, it's also a little bit culty though. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of it because you're, you can make a lot of money. You can be very successful if you don't make your bed. You can be very, you can be more successful than this girl if you don't copy her. Like it's just, it's just another little checkbox showing that it is really culty. Why are you idolizing this person? Because they have a lot of money? Why are you copying the things that they do in their personal life? Why don't you copy their actual sales tactics? Oh, probably because they're not actually gonna share that with you because they want you to do just good enough, but not better than them. Instead, these training calls at the end of the month, it's not gonna be about, okay, this is what we're gonna do. This is the template. You're gonna send this out to, you know, six people who are like your potentials that have like showed interest in the last few days or whatever. And then you're going to say this, you're going to say this, like actually training instead of yelling at people, gaslighting them and doing this woo woo motivational stuff. Have you heard anything about products? Have you heard anything about sales? No, you haven't. You can't be timid. You can't sit back and expect all day for, you know, to come to you. Right? So I texted Jenna today, one of my girls who is 19 years old. She's in college. She is just like the cutest little thing. And yeah, I could look at her like a, a teenager, but I don't look at her like a teenager. I look at her like a fucking badass because she's going for MM and she's what, a freshman, sophomore in high school, uh, college, whatever. And today, uh, let's see, I texted her today. We talk a fucking lot. So I'm looking through our conversation real quick. Okay, ready? So she showed me some girls uh, graphs today. So I said to her, you are such a good leader, Jenna. She said, this is word for word, her, her response. Oh my God, Vic, I got to match your energy. I just do what you do. Thank you. You're an amazing leader. Done. I just do what you do. You're an amazing leader. Do you want a badass team? Be a badass leader and they will do what you do. It's simple. It's that simple. What are you showing your team? How are you treating your team? What are you, what example are you leading by? You know, I see some people, the way that they post on social media and it all, it just makes sense why they are so successful in building an amazing community. You know, I see these teams that have an amazing culture. And is that, is this an example of the amazing team an amazing community and an amazing leader? This is not professional. This is 
This is borderline bullying. <laughs> like, this is not, no, no. And believe you me, I was a, I was nice. I was there for you, but work came first. And if you, if I gave you all the tools and you just weren't fucking working, then yeah, then okay, I'm not gonna give you, you know, the, the better leads. I'm not gonna, you know, throw you one here or there. Because if you're not working, you're not working and I can't help that. Now, if you're actually gonna do the work, then yes, I will help you. But that's not what she's doing. <laughs> a good leader does not manipulate, does not gaslight, does not do any of that. A good leader leads by example, keeps you accountable, understands your goals, knows your limits, and sets you up for success. It's not, not what she's doing. Able to do that. They provide value to people. People want to learn from them. People want to be like them. I want to be a part of that. And then on the opposite end, I see the way some people, mostly the newer girls, sorry to come for you guys, but mostly the newer girls, with the same generic stories, talking about join my team, downplaying this whole business, like as if this is just some little Girl Scouts, screenshotting some basic shit just to put it up on their story, just to do the bare minimum, just so they can say, well, I post every day. I post every day. I post every day and no one reaches out. Well, duh. Who would reach out to you? I sure as wouldn't reach out to you. You wouldn't attract me. That's shit, sure. You want someone like me in your downline? You want the hardest person, working person in the room in your downline? How are you going to get me? How are you going to sell me? Who the f are you attracting? What kind of team are you building when you pitch this as a show up for an hour a day, it's fine type of deal? Who are you attracting when you get out there with this cliche, join my team, yada, 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 scream. Oh my God. So she doesn't want people saying you can work this in pockets of time. Like I'm not just being annoying and touching my hair and putting um, serum in my hair just cause I'm a psycho. Whenever I do my hair down the middle, I'm always like, I have to have so much serum in it. I don't know why. Like I said, it's one thing when you are being recruited and then it's, an, it's another thing when you are in it. What they advertise is not actually what it is. That's why I always say it's a false opportunity because it is, it's a false opportunity. And they can say all day long, it's not a scam, it's not a scam, it's not a scam. But what is a scam? A scam is when you are advertised something and then what you purchase or what you pay for is not actually what you're getting. Let's be honest, are you, are you paying for the products? No, you're paying for the opportunity. You're paying for this dream but it's not the reality of what you're going to get. They can say all day, oh, you get all the training, you get one-on-one -on -one mentorship, do you? Because from what I'm seeing, no, you don't get one-on-one -on -one mentorship. You might get a call here and there, but it's not like one-on-one -on -one like you would in a corporate job. Okay, so now she's gonna talk about a like potential call she was on. So what they'll do is when they're in their DMs and if you're showing interest, They'll say like, oh, do you want to hop on a call with me tonight? And then you'll get on the call with them and they'll be like, oh, hey, I have, you know, my, my mentor is here. You know, also answer any of your questions. It's supposed to come off as helpful, but it's really so that the upline can help you close it and recruit this person. Okay. I ran a potential call yesterday, um, a three-way call for one of my girls. And the potential asked me how much time she needs to put in because she's a waitress and she makes almost $400 a week in tips. Now I used to be a waitress, okay? So I respect the hustle and $400 a week is not bad for a young girl, young college girl to be making $400 a week. That's not bad at all, actually, to be completely honest with you. That's, that's good, right? A lot in tips, um, but she, you know, she's hustling like $400 a week. I mean, she's working, she's out there working, showing up on her feet at the wherever she works, waitressing, however many days a week. So she asked me how many, how many hours a week I need to put in. So I said, well, that depends. How much money do you want to make? No answer really. Now, mind you, when I answer a question, when I ask questions for potentials, most of the time they don't even know what the to say. So, so no, no answer really. So I painted a picture for her of how I used to be a waitress and how I used to do doubles and I would open and close and I would do 17 hour shifts on my feet, 17 hours for the day. And I would get a 30 minute lunch break because each you got 15 minute lunch breaks for a regular shift. So I would get a 30 minute lunch break because those are my two in one. So 17 hours, I'd get 30 minutes. And yeah, I'd make about $500 for the day because I worked all day. That's great, right? $500 in a 
a day. That's a lot of money, right? But I knew I would never, ever, ever see another $500 day unless I did that again. Open, close, get sexually harassed by everybody in the kitchen, get bullied by the people who worked there telling me I was too ugly to be a server, telling me that they couldn't believe people gave me tips because my nose was too big. That's literally, I used to go to work for them to slap my ass, tell me I'm too skinny, I then tell me I'm too fat when I gained weight, I then tell me I'm ugly. I used to tell myself that that was worth it because the money was good. I used to tell myself that it was worth it because the money was good. Guys, I, so I said this to her. So I said, if you- First of all, I'm not saying that's ever okay and that any amount of money is at, like that's ever worth it or that. With any client facing, customer facing job, you're gonna deal with shitheads. That's always gonna happen. However, I'm also not diminishing this girl's experience with whatever workplace she was at because I've worked for some shitty companies. But in my opinion, what I think actually happened is that she was trying to twist that pain point because most servers, most people in hospitality know, people are shitty. Wouldn't you rather make more money and not have to deal with that? And then you've now got them really interested and they're like, fuck yeah, I would wait, like that'd be amazing. Because let's be honest, with any hospitality or even sales job, you know, you deal with, I can't tell you how many times I got yelled at over the phone over the last 10 years, at least every other day, sometimes once a day because of the certain jobs I was in and what I was selling or what type of calls I would handle. Even, especially when I was a manager, I would have to handle all of the escalated calls just because I like loved it. That's why a lot of times these, you know, mean comments or people just harassing me doesn't bother me because it's like, okay, oh well, great. I don't care. But that's what she's doing right here. She's taking the pain point or what she assumes is the pain point of someone who is in that industry and just fucking twisting it. And that's, that is a sales tactic. But again, these people in multi-level marketing companies and pyramid schemes and all that, and even some people in sales take that sales tactic way too far. Like they do with most marketing and sales tactics way, way too far said, if you want to make $500 a day with money, the way I made $500 a day going into the diner from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m., open to close, I don't put in less hours. No, I'm going to put in the same amount of hours, but I'm going to do it from my couch. And I'm going to tell every motherfucker who's nasty to me to fuck off because I can. Because at work, I had to keep my mouth shut, right? I could still, I could make the same. According to their market mentor, like handbook part of, or their distributor agreement, whatever you want to call it, and their policies and procedures and all those like back office documents, right? The Monate handbook, let's just call it that, or the Monate Bible. You actually can't do that. You can't just tell people to F off. Sure, if someone's rude to you, obviously, but they have like certain guidelines and stuff that they have to abide by. Nine times out of 10, or let's say nine market partners out of 10 are not abiding by their policies and procedures. They're not abiding by their terms of service, their guidelines, whatever you want to call it. Because if you're trying to recruit someone and then they're like, they give you an objection, no, you can't, you can't just say, oh, F off. That's against, that's against your handbook. You can't do that. You can, but you shouldn't. But also she makes so much money for Monique that they're not going to do anything about it. As long as they have it in writing, then they're safe. And as long as they have, you know, put it out there, they're safe. But there's that level of disconnect and that lack of accountability between the multiple marketing companies themselves and the distributors, the independent contractors, the salespeople, the hun bots, the boss babes, because of the fact that they're 1099 employees. And that's, there has to be that accountability. It's so dangerous. Put in the same amount of hours that you're putting in at, at your, where you work. I'll put in the same amount of hours. You put in the same amount of hours, sit on the couch all day. I don't care. Turn on the TV, take your pants off, get a bag of chips, take your top off, whatever the f you want to do. Why is she always naked? What's happening? I mean, don't get me wrong. I like hardly wear pants in my house, but like every example she has of like how she like can live her life. She's like, I'm you know, just butt ass naked in my apartment with a bag of chips. Sure, live your life, but like, this is weird. <laughs> and make $500. I do this from my, from my couch, you guys, or from my desk, two feet away from my couch. You know, I work all day, every single day. And now I make my previous yearly salary in a month. My career, I went to college. I went to college. I have a degree. I paid off student loans. I got my on paper dream job. My salary that I made for the year, I make in a month. Why would I put in less hours to do this when I could do when I could do it? Put in all these hours from my 
home, I was capable of putting in those hours elsewhere. You know, you're capable of working 50 hours a week at the diner or wherever. Why are you not capable of putting in 50 hours a week at Monet? This way you just do it from here. If you're capable of working hard for- The crazy thing is though is that she's saying, at least it sounds like she's saying, that you should quit your job. Because how are you going to work 50 hours a week at your actual job and then 50 hours a week with Monet? That doesn't make any sense. You, you can't you can't do that. How? So I didn't know. But the thing is, is that with hospitality, with sales, with a lot of sales and with hospitality, typically, you have a very small base pay and then, you know, commissions and tips and things like that, right? Bonuses, incentives. You're never going to make zero, right? And if you do go somewhere else, but you're never going to make zero dollars. With Monet, you could work 50 hours every week. 200 hours a month and still make zero dollars. It doesn't matter if it's from your couch, if you're not wearing pants, if you have a bag of chips, it doesn't matter. It's not guaranteed. So I asked her, do you want to be a server forever? Like, do you want to be a server for the next few years? Do you want to stay there? Like, what's your plan with like your, your server career? She laughed, you know, nervous laugh. She's like, oh my God, obviously not. Like, obviously not. I don't want to be a server. So I said to her, okay, well then what's your plan? How are you gonna level up? Now by this point, the girl was probably pissed herself three times, maybe a little sh out of her ass, you know. She's nervous at this point because I'm, I'm challenging her, you know. Haley, the call was with Haley. Haley saying El Mayo for real. Th this was Haley's potential. Haley was in herself. Haley's like, I'm running on the team and I'm scared right now. So I, I asked the girl, how are you gonna level up? What's your plan? You don't wanna be a server for the next few years, so what the is your plan? And I was genuinely asking her this because I need to know if you're genuinely ready to work before I waste my time. Don't get me wrong. People can start slow and level up later. It happens. It can absolutely happen. But I need- The fact that she treats people like this is disgusting. It's so, so gross. It's atrocious. And like, do you want to be a server forever? Obviously not. Unless you're like working your way up and you're, you know, wanting to work your way up in hospitality and it'll be like a general manager or something like that of like a, a restaurant, then sure. Okay, whatever. But one of our best friends does that and he, he is amazing. Like he is, he's a badass, but no, most people who are in, you know, who are serving for the time being, especially in college, don't want to do that forever. Like she's asking questions to like belittle the person basically and make them feel like what they're doing is less than when it's like that girl who's serving is making more money than 90 percent 92 percent of people in money i don't like this don't diminish and just shit on someone's job just because you want to make money off of them to make sure that you're at least open-minded to understanding the process i need to make sure that you at least understand the process okay that this is not put in 30 minutes a day and you'll beat your salary it's not gonna happen you want to quit being a waitress put in the same amount of time that you put in being a waitress and then let's see what happens in two months from now the people who don't make it to the top are simply the people who don't understand the process stop down playing the process don't tell people this is some quick easy thing don't start talking about step four before you explain step one, step two, and so 90, what, 99? Is it 99? I'm pretty sure it's 99. I'll do the math, but not like, so make it to the top, make it, if we're talking about the actual top, like the top rank. So yeah, over 99% of people just don't understand the process. I'm pretty sure they do. It's that the process doesn't work. Oh my Lord, I can't stand this girl. Why are you talking about getting a car without talking about building a team? Why are you talking about qualifying for DR without talking about how much product you got to sell? Like, you're like, oh, we don't have quotas. Like, this is fine. You can go to DR. We don't have quotas. Bitch, you got to sell $45,000 worth of product to get to DR. What? What are you talking about? Okay, I know y'all probably weren't expecting this, but listen, she might be mean AF, but at least she said that. At least she's pushing her team to set the right expectations. She's saying the, all the things that we hate, right? The there's no quotas, which yes, there is. To rank up, yes, there is. And then why are you, you, you know, promoting getting a car without 
that's saying that you have to build a team to get all of these things. So at least she's trying to have them set the right expectations, but it still is just so mean, you know? Like if they're if they're not setting the right expectations, that's because of you. Like, did you set the right expectations when you signed them up? You're you're the the top upline, baby. You are all you're the upline of everyone on that call. So if they're setting the wrong expectations, is it because of you? Because you just said that you lead by example. They're making their beds because of you. Are they promoting the opportunity and this business in the way that they are because of you? Hmm. You want to get on this trip? Here's what the f- you got to do to get there. There is a process. Like Jenna just said, no cutting corners. Now type in the chat in as many messages as you need, the ideal description of your ideal market partner, all the characteristics of your ideal market partner, all of it, every single, every single characteristic you want, every single personality trait. I know y'all are probably like, Chelsea, what the fuck, why are you agreeing with what she's saying? Because I have, I'm just so sick of people in multi-level marketing companies not setting the right expectations and spreading misinformation and giving people false hope. And think about it. If they set the right expectation of, no, you do you do have to sell. There are quotas. You are not going to get that car if you do not build the team. If you don't recruit this many people and have this many customers, like imagine if they actually set those right expectations, how many people wouldn't sign up? That's one of my, other than like the recruiting aspect of it, that's one of my main gripes. And I've always said that is the misinformation. Do you want every single personality trait that you want that person to have? All of it. Keep it going. Keep going. Describe them until you come up with 20 different characteristics of them. Keep it going. I love it. Love it. Amazing. <laughs> I can't even fucking read it and I love it. I'm, I can't even read one word that you guys are saying because it's going so fast and I love it. Amazing. Great, passionate, hungry, dedicated, willing, ambitious, independent, starving, consistent, committed, disciplined, coachable, loving, trusting, loyal, self-sufficient, coachable, resourceful, teachable, open-minded, genuine. Okay, so some of these things are what makes a good salesperson and that's they are they're salespeople. That's one thing that a lot of y'all have commented as well. And what I always say too, if some of these girls got into like legit sales, like actual sales, they would kill it. Like they would do so well, so like crazy good. And a lot of these girls who are, you know, stuck at apparently the bottom of the company, MM and below would do so well. If they actually work for a company that paid them. <laughs> like, And that it was like, I closed it. I'm done now. Instead of having to maintain it constantly like that's crazy so crazy completely asinine but also some of these things like loyal mm, genuine yeah i mean you gotta be some type of genuine people can sniff that out if you're fake especially with sales but like some of the things that's like uh what makes a good salesperson is they said like self-efficient or something but just disciplined accountable reliable you know dedicated hardworking, coachable obviously that's a huge one are y'all looking for someone to blindly follow you or are you looking for a good salesperson because realistically a good salesperson won't even last than an mlm because they will see like no i i'm worth more than this that's why a lot of times people who are really good at sales won't stay with the same company for let's say like five years or more because there's always something better. A lot of times you're getting like poached for other companies. That's happened to me multiple times. And you're just like, oh, but like, what can you offer me? And then it's like, okay, bye. <laughs> See ya. And you know your worth. You know, there's always gonna be something better out there. But it sounds like these, a lot of these people are looking for someone who's just gonna blindly follow them and stick to it and be self-disciplined and ignore the hate, ignore the relatable, authentic, team player, outgoing, friendly, lifer. Oh, oh my God. Talk fucking dirty to me, Mandy. Lifer. We want lifers. Every single person put the word lifer in the chat. Listen, I might only have one working eyeball right now, but what did I just say? I'm not winking at you. My eye hurts and it's watering because I just slice my eyeball open with my red flag. Everything's fine. I'm not trying to be seductive and like, it just hurts. Anyways. Um, so like I said, almost everything that they were explaining was, you know, I've always said you have to have the personality for sales. If not, you're not going to do well. Can I just do this video with my eyes closed now? Because it feels better when I have my eyes closed. <laughs>
And then someone said, lifer, what tangent did I just finish about people in sales? When you've been in sales for a long time, you understand that you don't owe the company anything at all. You understand that they're you understand that there's not really any loyalty. You understand that there's always going to be something better out there and you kind of got to have your eye out for it. And sure, the culture might be great. You might love your boss. You might love your team and you know what you're selling. But realistically, you're there to sell. You're there to get your paycheck. You're there to close and that's it. Now, saying that you are a lifer or a company when you are a 1099 salesperson and most of these people don't even consider themselves salespeople. Like, no, no, no. Oh yeah, put that in the chat, everyone. You're just looking for cult members. Just like say it with your chest because that's all you're looking for, girl. Lifer, I need to see it. Because you want people that you want to be in this for life with life, okay? Yes, lifers all the mother way. Now attract that, be that, think like that person, act like that person. Be a lifer because that's what you want to attract. You want people who are going to be in this company for life with you. Or, you know, until Ashley Moody, the Florida Attorney General, gets it shut down. So just to clarify, when they say starving, <laughs> a lot of times in sales, you'll say like, I'm like, I'm starving. Like, I want it so bad. Like, that's usually what they mean. I hope that's what they mean. <laughs> like, so typically in sales, which I pray to the flip, the starting over. So typically in sales, when they say starving, it just means that you like want it really bad. Like you will do anything to get it. Like you are starving for this. I pray to the flying spaghetti monster that that's what they mean and not actually like more so like so desperate for it, living paycheck to paycheck, like that type of thing. Unfortunately, that's probably what they mean because that's usually what they target. It's just people who are so desperate to make something happen. And they take advantage of that, which is horrible. We're almost done though. Your Twitter friends, your phone contacts, your mother's fucking phone book, every single person you can find who fulfills those characteristics. And someone said, what if you don't know people like that? Girl, you better go find them. You better go follow them and figure it the f out because they exist. Trust me, they exist. Get on Bumble, get cold messaging, get wherever you got to get and find them. Picture yourself at SED. Who are your AEDs? Who are your AEDs? If you want to be, you imagine SED. Get on Bumble, harass them, recruit your grandma. It's really sad that someone said, what if I don't know anyone like that? That person's clearly struggling and hasn't. I'm assuming, assuming, uh, well, I'd also say it's safe to assume that that specific person has like is struggling and hasn't been able to recruit anyone. And I guess that's like where cold messaging comes in when you like get desperate, but I don't know. I just, this is the, I've said it multiple times during this video, but this is the most toxic BS ever. Like, why don't you tell them where to look? I mean, yeah, she told them to go on a Bumble, but like that's still just fishing with dynamite, you know? Is that the right term? That's probably not the right term, right? Actually, no, a better a better analogy would be fishing with no bait, fishing just with a hook, you know? And just hoping that something swims along and gets snagged on it. That was beautiful, wow, I just thought of that. Oof, I am, <laughs> how do you say a poet? The A-E-D to your S-E-D. I know mine, I know mine. Most people have no fucking clue who theirs are. Most people have no idea who their AED would be to their SED. They can't even plan long-term because they don't even have that vision. Like I can envision. Okay, this is another contradiction. And that's why I wanted to listen to literally the entire call. But before she said that like, you can't blame the people below you for not ranking up because it's your fault if you're not ranking up. It's not anyone else's fault, it's your fault. Yet she just said that to make SED, you have to have AEDs below you, right? Or EDs. I don't fucking know, one of those. You gotta have a KFC below you, a TNT, an ABC. So it's just annoying that she's like, oh, I. you have to have those people picked out, you have to know who they are. It's like, I have mine picked out, I know who mine are. But does that mean, if you know who they are, does that mean that you're counting on them, right? But then you just told, you just told your team like 15 minutes ago that they shouldn't count on anyone else other than themselves. Count on themselves to recruit more people. Well, how do you recruit more people? By being rude to them, apparently. I can envision who every single line will be when I'm SED. Like I know who will be my team at SED. And I've known it since a year ago. Now I've just been working with it. Over a year ago, I've known it, who my AEDs were gonna be. I don't know it now because I'm executive director. Okay, yeah, sure, these are the people. No, 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 
I know, I knew who they were a year ago. And that's how I'm at ED now because I knew who my AEDs were gonna be, and I Whenever they say like, I'm SED, I'm ED, and I'm like, you're erectile dysfunction? Like, are I'm SED, I'm QYX, I'm LMNOP, okay? Carly, Nooper, all my girls that are going for AED now, we have been in the trenches together for a very long fucking time. A very long time. This wasn't like, okay, here's who's closest for me now, I'm gonna take you. No, 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 I'm like, I'm gonna get you there what the f do you need me to do for you because i'm gonna get you there like we're gonna go we're gonna go okay you don't wait until you're like okay now we're this close recruit those people don't wait until you could figure out who's gonna get there recruit them that way recruit them as this is my aed to my sed pitch them that way when you make that list tonight when you make that list after this call of the that i said First of all, I want you guys to write down all the characteristics. The characteristics that you're on the chat box, I want you to write them all down on paper. And then I want you to write down the list of names who fulfill those characteristics, every single name. And then I want you to write down your pitch to them. Game plan your pitch and tell them how your business has kicked off, but it has hardly scratched the surface because you're ready to level up with them. Your business has been cute so far. It's been cute, it's been fun. But now I want you, I'm ready to level the up. Like, I, I guess that would be flattering to hear from someone, but wouldn't you then second guess or, I mean, really just question everything they've been posting? Like, if they say, like, oh, yeah, no, my business hasn't even scratched the surface. Like, you've been posting about financial freedom and how well you're doing for four months. So are you doing well? And if so, why do you need me? It's truly about recruiting. We have heard zero times in this call, zero times in this call anything about the product at all. This is all about recruiting and it's an end of the month training call. How do you hit your ranks? How do you meet your goals? How do you grow your business? How do you make money? All about recruiting, all about building a team. That's it. Get those characteristics, get those names and get your pitch together and let them know that your business has, hasn't done shit yet because you're waiting for them. I want your goals to make you feel honestly uncomfortable and intimidating intimidating sharing it with these people because you feel like they're gonna think that you're crazy why why do your goals have to scare you why and like i i can understand like kind of being maybe a little bit hesitant or feeling a little bit insecure when discussing like your big goals with someone i've been there i've definitely been there i don't know like i can kind of understand that but also why do your goals have to make you uncomfortable and if your goals really make you that uncomfortable to actually say them out loud, your goal is probably a little bit too big. And maybe you should actually start with something attainable and simple to get you to that ultimate goal. Do that one thing that's going to get you to that point instead of focusing on the huge thing and not knowing what the hell you're doing. Like you should at this point be so like intimidated and overwhelmed and scared of the goals that you have and the people that you're about to pitch. First of all, Pitch up, okay? Recruit up. Don't recruit D and F players because they're easier to pitch. Recruit A players, okay? Go up, go out of your league. You want the AED to your SED, then go find an AED. Don't find somebody who's like all the way down here because you're like, oh, it'll be easier for me to pitch her. That's lame, okay? So recruit up and to the point where you're so intimidated and uncomfortable because you're like, oh my God, they're going to think I'm crazy and guess what i know i'm crazy i want crazy people working with me i don't want weak-minded people i want crazy people working with me there are people hitting aed um what <laughs> she keeps comparing things that don't even like that don't even correlate also i'm looking in my viewfinder and with these on my lipstick looks nude which is really freaking me out and what do you know my red flag just looks like a flag because when you wear rose colored glasses all the red flags just look like flags like i said she keeps like comparing things that aren't comparable before <laughs> before it was the what the motivation and the self-discipline she's like acting like those are opposites and it's like no no those those two things really do go hand in hand i mean it's the inspiration and dedication you know it's, it's part of the same you know conversation right and then <laughs> saying it's like i want crazy people i know i'm crazy i don't want weak-minded people um 
just because you're not crazy doesn't mean you're weak-minded. Like what? <laughs> Again, not even part of the same conversation, lady. What are you doing? Not making any sense, that's for sure. And really just manipulating people. And I would say maybe even unknowingly, but it's not unknowingly. This is a mean girl. And this is a prime example of how not to treat your team, how not to be a leader, how not to treat people in general. So don't do that. And I really think that she is trying to say like, I think she said weak-minded because then people will be like, well, I'm not weak-minded. I wanna be the AEDD or SED or all that. So it's just putting in these little things here and there and planting these seeds and this verbiage to later manipulate someone and use it against them. And it's just, it's just gross and wrong. And you deserve way better. Who's to say that those people aren't in your network right now? Why are, why are there people in the director chat hitting AED in three months and that's not possible for you? Why is it not possible that, that an AED in three months is in your network? <laughs> fucking psycho. I'm crazy. I'm scary. I'm intimidating. Fucking no. Yeah, we got that, girlfriend. We got that. You can be intimidating and scary to someone and all that while still being nice. I've had people tell me that I'm intimidating or I'm scary if they don't if they don't know me and haven't actually you know taken a moment to get to know me or had a conversation with me and actually you know know my heart. And even some people who watch like one or two or maybe even three videos and they're like, oh my God, you're so mean. No, baby, you're just fragile. That's what it is. I'm not gonna apologize for not sugarcoating things and for telling the truth. The truth that needs to be told is that you are more valuable. Don't like me, that's fine, but understand that this is the truth. And you can be a strong-minded person. You can be a strong woman. You can be a powerful woman. You can be an assertive woman without being deceitful, manipulative, and downright rude and belittling as well. I want people like that. Level up as if you're hitting SED tomorrow. Level up as if you will be in the Million Dollar Club next month. Don't look back and wish that you went harder, you guys. Don't look back and be like, I, I could have done this. I should have done that. Do not look back and wish that you did more. Look back and say, I gave it my all. I don't care how long it took me to get here. I got here. And on that note, thank you for giving me 42 minutes of your time tonight. I don't want to take up another minute because I want you guys to get to work. I want you guys to make that list. Check it twice like Santa Claus. Check it three times like Mrs. Claus too, who's got his back. All right, friends. So that's the end of that call. Like I said, it's just, it's just mean, you know, like I, I've been a sales manager. I've been a top performer. There's a clear difference between being just mean and manipulative and assertive. Okay. In my experience, <laughs> people work better under you and appreciate you more as a leader, as a boss, as a superior, when you are assertive and have their back and aren't like that. As I've said multiple times during this video, if you have been treated like that, by an upline, by anyone in an MLM, by anyone in general in your life. You deserve so much more. Please be assertive. Please stick up for yourself. You deserve so much better than that. You deserve more and you are more valuable and too valuable to be manipulated, scammed, treated like doo-doo just for someone else's financial gain. It's crazy. So remember, if you want to be truly spicy, and stay spicy like my sign says, then all you have to do is subscribe, comment, like, all that, and you will be truly spicy for the rest of time. I'll see y'all in my next video, which will most likely be tomorrow, unless today's Friday, since I typically do not post on Saturdays or Sundays. But either way, I will see you in my next video. Bye.